Hey guys, welcome back to Simplify Mechanic. My name's Thomas. In today's video, today's video we're going to be talking about when I thought I was some young hotshot starting to work on some vehicles. Thought I knew everything until I caught the car on fire and burnt that mother to the ground. So once again, if you want to use my life as your entertainment, stay tuned because we're starting right now. Hey guys, how are you doing today? I am doing great, like always. Our last few videos have been kind of, eh, like, you know, I'm tired, I'm exhausted, I'm struggling, which is, hey, all great things to talk about. If you're struggling, you talk about it. So let's set the scene for you. Rewind the clock maybe seven, eight years ago, maybe 70, 80 pounds ago as well. I did not grow up working on vehicles. I was actually raised by my mom. She was a single mother. My father died when I was very young and I only had women in my life. There was never that male presence in my life that actually taught me things, taught me how to shave, how to mow the grass, things like that. You know, so I had to always learn them things. And actually we were so poor growing up, we didn't even have a vehicle most of my life. So we didn't even have nothing to work on. But when we did, I still didn't work on the vehicle. I didn't know nothing about it. Most of my time in the Marine Corps, I didn't know anything about it. Not till the very end, after I got hurt, I needed to switch jobs and I needed something to help with my PTSD. So that's when I started trying to learn how to work on cars. Now I'm self-taught. As I sit here today, I am no master mechanic. I am somebody that has common sense, I can read a book, I can look at something, and I can apply it in real life. And if you can do that, there's a lot of things you can do on your own car. Now when it comes to diagnosing stuff, that's a little bit different. But when you're just changing parts, a lot of people can change parts. If you have the tools and you can watch a video or read a book, you can learn how to do that. So as I'm working on my own car a little bit and I'm getting a little bit better at this and I start working on some friends' cars and I start working on some family's cars. Well, then somebody else heard about me, you know, just word of mouth. So I actually took on a couple customers and I was like, hey, you know what? I'm actually going to make a little bit of money here. So I was, you know, pretty excited. So I wasn't running a business. I wasn't doing anything like that. You know, maybe one job a week, something like that. Something very small. Like I shouldn't even be called a mechanic at this time. Just call me a mech. I mean, I haven't even made it to the full word yet. And this woman calls me and says, Hi, Mr. May. She's very sweet, very nice. Your mom told me that you work on vehicles. And I know a couple other people that you fixed their car. And they said you did a good job. Would you be interested in working on mine? And I'm like, yeah, sure. Just tell me what's going on. And she goes, well, I just had a fuel pump installed, but I keep smelling gas. When I'm driving, I smell a lot of gas and I'm worried something might be leaking. So I was excited. I haven't done anything with fuel yet, really. I haven't had any jobs fuel related. At this time, I've done a water pump, a starter, an alternator, things like that. I head out there, I pull up like I'm fucking king ding-a-ling, right? For some reason, once I started working on cars, I felt more manly. I mean, I was just in the Marine Corps for a decade, saving lives, being a decorated war hero. Here I am, like, finally cutting the grass by myself, and I'm like, yeah, I'm a man changed my own tire like that's what made me feel like a man not that other stuff so here i'm on scene i'm unloading my tools i'm talking to the woman i'm letting her know hey no big deal i can take care of this you know and i've been pretty confident at this point because you know i worked on maybe 10 cars all 10 cars i was able to get back on the road with no issues none like i was batting 100 i was like man this is easy mechanic <laughs> You know, it's easy money. So I jack up her car, I get under there. I don't see anything leaking yet. You know, I start the car and I do smell it, but there's nothing leaking, I can't see it. So my first mistake was, I go to take the fuel line off, disconnect it, and I disconnect that bad boy and it sprays fuel straight into my eyes and mouth like a three second stream, just bam. I didn't know I had to relieve the fuel pressure, I had no idea. I just popped it off and it hit me right in the face and I drank a gallon of this stuff, dude. It messed me up so bad. I popped up from underneath that car and that woman was there and I act like I was dying. I was like, give me a towel, give me a towel, you know? So here I am trying to wash it off. And if you ever had gasoline in your face, I mean, it is horrible. This water isn't doing anything. And my mind's racing. I'm thinking, I'm gonna go blind. I can't believe I did this. And I was still confused. I was, still, I was like, what happened? I don't know what happened. So I'm out of commission that day. Like I talked to the woman. I'm like, I got to go home. You know, I come in, my wife's like, what's wrong with you? Because at this time, my face is, I don't know if it's burnt, whatever it is, but it's red as Rudolph's nose. Like my face is damaged here. She's like, what happened to you? And I'm like, I don't want to talk about it right now. Like I was mad. So I'm going to bed. 
But man, it messed me up bad. And you know that old woman was sitting back thinking, I don't know if I should have this guy work on my car. So I wake up the next day and my confidence is shattered, man. I get up, my head's down, you know. I have to go look in the mirror and give myself a pep talk like, you can do this. You're a man. You can work on cars. <laughs> I can't even take myself serious now, but this is what I'm doing. You know, I'm pumping myself up. I was a younger kid, man, just straight out of the Marine Corps. So I'm pumping myself up here. Like, I'm going to do this. So I go back to the woman's house. I told her what happened. I lied a little bit and said there was something wrong with one of her fuel lines. And that's what caused it, you know, but I'm okay. And I'm going to fix it. And I'm not even going to charge her for the piece that sprayed me in the face. See, now I got to fix it. So I get back underneath the vehicle, take the straps off. I'm lowering the tank down. I'm doing everything like I'm supposed to. I bring it down. Now remember, I'm working with the fuel tank here. And of course she just filled the vehicle up because it was broke down. She had a fuel pump put in it, went, filled her tank up with gas, and now she's smelling all of it, right? So this gas tank weighs, I don't know, 200 pounds at this point, full of gas. Now I can see the fuel pump. So I'm looking at it and it's, like I said, it was a brand new fuel pump. They did put it in, but the wirings connected to it was all chewed up. It looked like a mouse or something got to it, but I'm not sure how it would because there wasn't a lot of room. So I'm like, that's the problem right there. I don't know why I thought them wires was causing the gasoline smell, but for some reason in my mind that made sense. But in reality, it was the locking ring that went around the fuel pump it wasn't the right size, so it was letting fumes escape the gas tank into the vehicle. But in my mind, in my newbie mind, I'm like, look at them wires all chewed up. That's what it is right there. Let's fix that. Now, remember, she didn't have any issues starting her vehicle. It was just the fumes. So all I had to do was really fix the lock ring. But I didn't even know nothing about that. Me, I'm like, I'm going to fix them wires, and I'm going to fix them good. So I dropped the tank rest of the way down take the fuel pump out. I mean, I'm sitting there doing it. Now given, even today, my electrician skills or my wiring skills are pretty lame to be honest with you. But back then it was really bad. I mean, I was just wrapping them together and how many times I could do this with it until it got real tight. Hey, that was a good wire to me. And actually once I was done with it, I mean, I was pretty proud of myself, but looking back on it, I made it worse. Should have just left that alone. But man, I thought I was the shit. I was like, look at that. Look how nice that is. Got my electrical tape out, tied them bad boys all together. Woo. I mean, it was this thick when I was done. I was so proud. I was taking pictures and stuff. I was like, man, I'm going to be a full-time mechanic. I'm going to have great customers. None of my customers are going to be assholes. <laughs> I'll never be sued. I mean, my life's going to be great. <laughs> So I put everything back together. I get out. I start the vehicle. Starts up right away. I'm not smelling any fumes. She's happy. Everybody's happy. She pays me $200 and I'm excited. I go home. Everything's good. Go to sleep. I mean, I sleep like a king because now I'm a man. Sleeping like the king I am till about 6.30 a.m. I get a phone call and it's the woman and she's screaming, my car is on fire. My car is on fire. I hang up and I'm still halfway asleep. I'm like, this is a nightmare. This is a dream. So I roll over, go back to sleep because I really could not process what was going on for some reason. She calls back, like, get out of here right now. I woke my wife up and I said, hey, my customer, her house is on fire. I didn't even realize it was the car. Here I'm thinking it's a house fire and she just needs help. Like, like I'm the firefighter or something, but I go out there and when I pull up and what it reminded me of is when I was in Iraq and I got blown up and the vehicle caught on fire, it looked like this car just hit an improvised explosive device and got blew in half. This thing was a blaze and it was burning straight to the ground, I'm telling you. And it's a hectic scene. And I'm trying to talk and I was like, so what happened, what happened, right? She goes, all I know is I started the car. I could smell gasoline really, really bad. I walked inside and when I came back out, it was on fire. As soon as she said when she smelled gas, like my heart dropped. I was like, oh no, like, it's my fault because it still didn't click with me that it was my fault. You don't think that the car is going to actually blow up or catch fire. All I knew is it wasn't me till she said that and my heart dropped. All I could think about is I am not going to financially recover from this. <laughs> I was done. It's horrible. All I'm sitting there, I'm like, I'm a horrible mechanic. I'm not even a mech anymore. I'm just a 
I'm just a piece of shit. Like, this woman's crying. Her car is burnt to the ground. Like, how's she going to get to work? How's she going to do all this stuff? Here it is. My fault. Because I'm thinking I'm the new electrician. I'm just going to rewire everything. And obviously, I'm not a business. I'm just some guy. So I'm thinking she's going to sue me. I'm thinking the worst case scenario. So I stay there. It seems like eight hours. Because after, you know, you blow somebody's car up, you can't just be like, all right, I'm going to go now. So I just sat there and I tried to, like, try to help her through it. She's calling her insurance company and she's trying to explain to them that her car blew up i mean it's just a mess i'm thinking to myself well i only have liability on mine like how am i gonna pay for this so i finally leave well i try to call the woman the next day and she doesn't answer i go over there and i knock on her door she doesn't answer you know i'm trying to check up on her plus i'm worried i'm like what am i gonna do about this you know what, what are we gonna do about this how are we gonna get you a car you know i'm freaking out a little bit well, she is not messaging me. She doesn't answer my calls, nothing. So I'm thinking, I'm going to jail, dude. Or she's going to sue me because she's not talking to me. She's not doing any of that. And she never did. Like, never talked to me again after that. I never had to pay anything. Nothing. And I still see her time to time. She'll give me a mean mug like I did it on purpose. No, I didn't. Never found out why. So I'm still not taking responsibility. It wasn't them wires that led to that gas tank that made it blow up. I did notice two weeks later when I seen her, she had a brand new car. So I'm thinking maybe the insurance covered it. She's probably not ever going to call me back. Because I was going to start my mobile mechanic business. But after that, I tell you what, that put a damper on things, man. I went from being King Tut to nobody. I was like, man, I just better change tires because obviously I have no idea what the hell I'm doing. And it's an example to go by. If you're not comfortable with the job you're about to do in your vehicle, do not do it. Hire somebody that is more educated or hire somebody that's a professional. Do that. Don't hire me. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Not a thumbs up on my mechanic skills. Give me a thumbs up on the messed up life I've had. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. For some reason, I've lost like five subscribers yesterday. You assholes. So if you're watching this video and you ain't subscribed, go to hell. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But I do know this. If you look in the video description, you'll see my cash app and my Venmo. If you want to see some more DIY mobile mechanic work videos, then you got to send me some money because our work vehicle is down. But I got to have one rich subscriber out there that's going to hook me up. But no matter what, thank you guys for everything. You guys are not just my subscribers and viewers. You're friends. You're my therapist. You're everything to me. So I thank you. And like always, Simplify till next time.